it's really important that within your setting a plan for yourself, so a, a, a budget, a finance, a spending plan, is to have financial goals for yourself, okay, and obtainable goals. Okay, so I, I sit down with people and they're like, okay, my goal is to pay off my twenty thousand dollar credit card. That's my goal. Like, that, how how obtainable is that? Eventually, someday they're going to be able to hopefully attain that. But it's so it's such a daunting goal that a lot of times people don't accomplish it because they set this lofty goal that that, that they can't reach. Okay, so set goals for yourself, but set realistic goals for yourself. Okay, if you have a twenty thousand dollar credit card, maybe your goal is to pay down two thousand dollars. Okay, you pay two thousand dollars down in your credit card, and then you reward yourself. Maybe you go out and buy dinner for your family, or go buy yourself some new shoes or something like that. But set little goals, and then once you accomplish those goals, treat yourself. To something. Okay, and then and then next time, set a little bit more loftier of a goal. Okay, and then it becomes a snowball that once you start obtaining these goals, you get like it just gives you an adrenaline boost to get to the next goal. So it's really important if you're if you're if you're serious about changing how you handle finances, you have to have, you have to have a spending plan, and you have to set goals for yourself. Okay, but you need to review your spending plan. There is a lot of human error that happens in banking. You've got to know what's going on with your account. You've got to know how you're spending money. Okay, so this is I'm not a big fan of homework. My wife's a teacher. I tell her like, don't get homework out. That's terrible. Um, but this is <laughs> this is the homework I'm going to give you guys. Track your finances. <laughs> Ideally, track your finances for a month. Okay, get a piece of paper, track it all out, see what you're spending money with. A lot of people are very surprised with where they spend money. Uh, fast food and coffee kills people. Mm -hmm. When they track their finances for a month, most people, they will find that they spend a lot of money on that stuff. So track your finances for a month. And the reason why I say a month is because most of your bills are going to be within that month. So uh, track your finances, find out where you're spending money. But don't, if you're if you're married or have a significant other and you're you're sharing expenses of the house, track both of your finances. And the thing, and the thing about like setting a, setting a spending plan for yourself, you can have all the intentions in the world of doing this and, and doing it right. But if you have a significant other that has no plans to do any of this, it's not gonna work. You have to both be on board with it. Um, so like when I when I sit down and do financial coaching with people. I always say, okay, are you married? If they say yes, or if you have a significant other that you're you're you're, you're sharing expenses with, bring both people in. Okay, because this has to be a team effort. And really, honestly, it should involve the entire team. Okay. Uh, be your research offer. I'm a big one on this one. If you can find a cheaper deal somewhere, do it. There's a, the cool thing about the internet nowadays. I mean, there's a lot of terrible things about the internet. But one of the cool things about the internet is you can find some pretty awesome deals on stuff. And save yourself a, a, a tremendous amount of money. So be a research shopper. And, and, and don't just go to any website and buy something. You want to make sure it's a reputable website that is legitimate because a lot of people can get themselves in trouble for signing up for stuff that they that they don't know what they're signing up for. Um, but if you can find it cheaper somewhere else, why wouldn't you want it? Uh, Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist. You guys ever shop on there? You can get really good deals. And you can a lot of times barter with people. So be a research shopper. Just don't go and buy something at the first place you go. There's a there's a website called Camel Camel Camel. Camel I'm pretty sure it's Camel Camel Camel.com. It tracks Amazon stuff. So if there's something you really want that's on Amazon, you can put you can you can scan like the it's a BIN number or something like that. You can you can copy that number and put it into Camel Camel Camel, and you can set a price that you want to purchase that at. So once it once this product reaches this amount, I want you to send me a notification of it. So if there's stuff on Amazon that I really 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 want, I'll copy that number and put it into Camel Camel, and I'll set a price. Like I'm not going to buy it until it reaches this price. And you can get some really good deals on stuff. I've been work, I've been waiting to trying to buy this Murphy bed. You guys don't know where it is, right? Yeah. And it's just like, it's crazy expensive, like $800. And so I'm like, okay, I set a price for it for like $300 and it hit it for one day and it sent me a notification and I tried to get in there and get it, but it already changed price. So I'm just like waiting for this Murphy bed to go down in price so I can buy it because I'm not paying $800 for this bed. Yeah. So you can do stuff like that. If there's something you really want, set a notification for yourself that when it hits that price, you can buy it. It's a great way to do it. Okay. I'm going to charge Drive up now, so I'm pulling up yours. I don't think mine's stuck. So, okay. but it's what's the date on today's date at 806? Yeah, I saved it to my hotel. Any 
any questions about any of that stuff? Yeah. For my money, I use the Ramsey Every Dollar yeah. app. Is that like good to use? Right. Yeah, the Ramsey, are you paying monthly for it? No. Okay. Because you can get it for free or else you can pay money for it. Yeah, I, I use the free version. Yeah, it's awesome. So having, and, and, it, and so this kind of stuff is for, everybody can, does it a little bit differently. You find something that works for you. So if that works for you, that's great. However, there's a lot of there's a lot of products out there that charge people money, but you can do it for free with a lot of other products. Um, so if something works for you, that's fantastic. My one of my best friends, he's an spreadsheet um, Excel spreadsheet person, and he puts his entire life on an Excel an Excel spreadsheet, and that's how it works for him. Is so that what great. that is? The, what you're talking about? No, it's it's an app that helps you manage your money. Uh, so I've gone through the Dave Ramsey Masters Coaching Series, and a lot, a lot of their ideas are great. The one thing that I differ with him on is like the credit card issues and stuff like that, which I understand why he says it. Um, but so there's a few things that I differ with him, but I've been through the master coaching series and it's awesome. It's really good. It's good stuff. Yeah. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of services and stuff out there that you can sign up for. I'm, I'm careful about the programs that you type in all your account information in and it manages everything. I'm really worried of that kind of stuff because when that gets hacked, if it gets hacked, then every single account that you have is complicated. Mm. right so i don't do that um but if there's something out there you can type in and make a budget for yourself the, the important thing is like when you're setting a spending plan for yourself looking at a pre-existing spending plan is really good because what happens a lot of times is people don't think about stuff they're like oh yeah i need to save money for this but if you look at a pre-existing spending plan that somebody's created then a lot of times you'll see that stuff like oh yeah i need to have this stuff into my budget and stuff um so I think when you're initially setting a spending plan for yourself, I think it's really important to look at what somebody else is already doing. Uh, don't shop without a list. That the spontaneous, like people shop as a sport, right? Like Black Friday is probably the worst. Yeah. Just like literally go to the store, no idea what they're gonna do. They just want something. And they go out and they spend way more. This, I mean, this is the kind of thing that happens to me at Costco. Like I have to be careful when I go to Costco. Because I will leave and spend five hundred dollars at Costco if I don't have a plan when I go to Costco. So setting a list for yourself, like what do you need, um, and then just get what's on the list. If there's something you find at the store that you really want, notate that. And I think I'll say this a little bit longer in a, a, a next slide, maybe. Uh, if there's something that you're like you're out shopping and you see and you're like, oh man, I really want that. Wait to buy it. Wait a week to buy it. Wait two weeks to buy it. Because if you still want it in two weeks or a month, you probably want it. Right, but if a lot of times what happens is people don't buy it, and then like two days later, like, I don't know if I need that, and they can save themselves a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So don't just be that spontaneous shopper that buys something as soon as you see it. Like wait, and then if you want it later, then buy it, and you can afford it. Uh, plan for periodic expenses. <clears throat> There's stuff in your life that pops up, and a lot of stuff you could probably plan for, like um, sport. Like if you're playing, if you have kids and they're on sporting teams. Like you don't pay that every single month usually, it's periodically that like comes up. So plan for that kind of stuff. Like go through and make a list of stuff that the expenses that you have, um, <coughs> car registration, you do it once a year, right? Like make a list of all those stuff and plan for those things. Because what happens is you're not gonna put that in your monthly budget, but when they come up, they can bust your budget because you weren't prepared for it. So just understand like those expenses come up, try to plan for it as much as possible. Um, expect emergencies. Stuff happens, right? I feel like this. So I'm, I'm a big fan of buy, of not buying a brand new car. I've always I've always been like that. Like they depreciate so much in the first three years. So I try to buy a used car. I've had so many car problems in the last year. I'm at the point I'm like, uh, should I buy a new car? Because it's like because I've been spending so much money. I think I've spent like thirty five hundred dollars this year on car expenses. But the thing about it is I don't have a monthly car, rate. and so I'm able to save all that money. But but plan for emergencies. If I didn't plan for that thirty five hundred dollars, then that would be a huge that would be a killer for me in my spending plan. So have un, expect emergencies and then have money set aside for that. So this this is this is one of the things that I want you guys to. One of the best ways that you can eliminate financial stress in your life is have an emergency savings plan. Okay, and the initial amount you should put in there is a thousand dollars. Okay, and the reason why I say a thousand dollars is because if you're Car breaks down, almost always it's right around a thousand bucks. You need new tires, thousand bucks. You need a new computer, thousand bucks. You said this is for the emergency account? Yeah, emergency savings account. And so your emergency savings account is separate from your savings account, right? This is just for emergencies. 
if Bon Jovi comes to Yakima, that is not a murder. <laughs> yeah, this is like stuff that you, need, that you need in your life, okay? Tires for your car, uh, any kind of maintenance on your car to get to work, stuff that you need to survive, stuff that needs to happen to your house. Um, a lot of times when it's an emergency, it's gonna be a thousand bucks. So if you have a thousand dollars in emergency savings account set aside, it doesn't, when you have that emergency come up, you can pay for it immediately, right? And you don't, you start to not experience financial stress like everybody else does, okay? So your initial goal is a thousand dollars. And you're like, well, how do I get a thousand dollars in emergency savings account? Most of us have a thousand dollars worth of crap that we can sell our house, okay, in your garage. Okay, and if you don't think you do, then you need to invite a friend that doesn't care about your stuff. They can go and tell you. Because <laughs> realistically, if you're, if you're facing it and make it for you and you didn't inherit it from your grandma, you can probably sell it, right? If you haven't used it for the last year, you can probably sell it. So if you need to bring a friend over, then it's going to be like, yeah, you need to sell that and that and that. Most of us, I think if we really tried hard, we could get, if we had a garage sale, we could probably sell a thousand dollars worth of stuff and put it in, into an emergency savings account. Uh, but that, like I said, that is separate from your normal savings. Okay, so your first goal is a thousand dollars in emergency savings account, and then it's a month expenses. Okay, so whatever, find out what your expenses are, monthly expenses a month, set aside that for a month. After you get a month, three months. After three months, a year. When you have a year's emergency savings account for all your expenses, a year's expenses saved in the emergency savings account, you don't experience financial stress like other people do. Because it doesn't matter. If you lose your job, it doesn't matter. You're prepared for that. So like when you have a plan for when stuff happens, you're not going to be stressed out like everybody else is. Most people in our country cannot cover a $400 emergency expense right now. Wow. Yeah. 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 So if you, if, you have an emer- if you have a $1,000 emergency savings account, you're already doing better than like 80% of the population. Wow. So start there. Okay. Have an emergency savings account for yourself. And then, like I said, the ultimate goal is to have a year's expenses saved up in emergency. So, savings. what if you have the emergency savings account, but you don't have a savings account? You got to do both. How do you do both, though? Which one do you say, okay, this goes here, this goes here? Well, once, once so once you get to a thousand dollars, then you monthly start putting money aside for your emergency savings account, but you're also still getting, putting money to your regular savings account, right? You got to pay yourself first. When you're setting a spending plan for yourself, Paying yourself first is the most important part. You've got to set aside money for yourself. I, I work with people and they come to me and they're like, yeah, I, I just don't have any money. I, I'm living paycheck to paycheck. I feel like I'm about ready to be foreclosed on in my house. And I look at their finances and they're about to be foreclosed on their house, but their credit card is up to date. Like their payments are up to date on their credit card. Like you have to have your house to survive. Like you have to have food, water, shelter to survive. You don't, your credit card doesn't provide you any kind of anything that makes you survive, right? When you don't, when you start making a payment on your credit, what, what, what do you think happens? They call you. They, they will call you. They will make your life miserable through your phone, but they can't, they don't come to your house and start taking stuff that you bought on your credit card, um, but they will take your house. They will take your card, things that you need to survive. So your credit card should be one of the last things you Okay, and I'm not saying that you just like just don't make a credit card payment, but you want to have conversations with your creditors and be like, hey, I can't make a full payment this month. Can I make a partial payment? Right? Because a lot of times companies will work with people. During COVID, we did loan modifications for thousands of people. Doesn't that make your credit go down if you're not like paying the full payment every month? Not, not if you have a conversation with them and yeah. they don't do it. They won't come along. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the, the companies, they're responsible for reporting stuff that happens on your credit report. So they report to the credit reporting companies and they put on your credit report. So if you have a conversation with the company, you're like, hey, I can't make a full payment this month. Can I make a partial payment? I'm going to pay you back, but I need, I need some kind of payment plan or make partial payments. Can you keep it off my credit? A lot of times they will. Because the alternative for credit card companies is you just stop paying them. And they don't want that. Right? They want to get their money back. So they will work with people a lot of times to keep sense. them, to, to get them to keep it off their credit card and to keep them with that card, right? And the same is with like houses and cars and stuff like that. Like we, so we do lending for vehicles and houses and stuff. We are not in the business, car business. We don't want to take cars back if we don't have to, right? We, I remember one, shortly after I first started with Pretty and we took back a Range Rover. I think it was, I think they owed about $35,000 on the Range Rover and it was worth only like $15,000. So like we, as we were, so the person could pay for it, they just dropped it off. That's a $20,000 hit for us. 
Like that's a liability to us, right? So if we can keep people in their cars, like we know that if we're gonna take a house back, if we're gonna take a car back, we're gonna take a loss in that. And we don't wanna take people's stuff back anyway. So we're gonna to try to work with them to keep those in those gigs. Right. Right. So, but what happens is a lot of times people don't have those conversations with their creditors. So just know you you can have those conversations with your creditors and you should, especially if you can't make your payments or make a full payment. Because you, you can save yourself a lot of heartache, when, especially when it comes to your credit report, if you have conversations about it. Make sense? And honestly, your credit report doesn't matter if you're not doing anything with your credit anytime soon. Right? So if you're not buying a car, if you're not if you're not buying a house, who cares what your credit score is? Right. In the state of Washington, they put laws against uh, using credit for insurance. Well, some other states you can they can use your credit report or credit score and charge you more in car, car insurance. The state of Washington has put in, put rules against that. They're, the uh, insurance companies are challenging it right now. But I mean, honestly, if you're not doing anything with your credit, who cares what your credit score is? Right. It'll go back. Your credit score is a living, breathing uh, number. Okay, your credit report is a living, breathing document. Every single month, it changes. Right. Okay, there's three of them. It's all the numbers are going to be different. And and if you don't make your payments, it's going to go down. Thirty five percent of your score is based on making your credit card payment or your loan payments. So it's going to affect it for sure. But if you can have those conversations to keep up credit, you should. But it but once it goes down, you can bring it back up. Yeah. Uh, expect emergencies. Uh, spend with a purpose, right? Know what you need and what you're going to get. Um, when you go and you're just shopping as like a sport, um, you can spend a lot of money. And I know, and I work with a lot of people who do that. Um, but also save with a purpose. Like, what do you want to save money? What, like, what's your goals? When you set goals for yourself, when it comes to spending and savings, you can accomplish some pretty amazing things because you have a plan for your money. You're making your money work for you rather than just working for your money. Make sense? Save early and often, like this, especially, you know, the younger you are, you want compound interest is your best friend. Okay. Start saving. It doesn't matter. I don't care how much you can save now. Start saving a little bit because time is your best friend when it comes to saving money. Okay. So start as soon as you can. If I works. So you're talking about the app. That's, if it works for you, great. You know, everybody like this is, I can't even go like, okay. Yeah, you guys, sh you should use Mint and you use Dave Ramsey every dollar and you do, because it doesn't work like that. Everybody's a little bit different. And so find out what works for you. If you can, if it, if you can keep a budget every month going, then that's working for you, right? And then whatever you're doing to do that, stay, stay doing that. That makes sense. But you got to figure out like this could be a trial and error. And a lot of times when you when you set a spending plan for yourself, it is like very seldomly do I work with people and they get it right. But I'm pretty strict about when, when I work with people in their in their spending plans. You guys heard of the dollar of the uh, envelope method? Mm -hmm. yeah. So the envelope method is you set a budget for yourself, set a spending plan for yourself, and then you put money in envelopes that has to do with every single one of your categories. So there's a housing envelope, and there's a grocery envelope, and there's an entertainment envelope, and you put money in there, and you take that money out, and you go to the when you're going to go to a movie. You take money out of the entertainment envelope, and when the entertainment envelope is done, it's out, it's empty, you're done doing entertainment stuff. And it works really well for people. Um, and, it's, and it's an old method. It's really making a resurgence, especially now that things are getting so expensive. Um, but I think it's a great idea. And it, it's helped a lot of people. Like being strict about that. Like I, I tell people like, if you're doing that and you're driving and you forget the entertainment envelope, don't just put it on your credit card, drive back to your house and get your envelope. Because what happens is when you use your credit card, there's no emotional attachment at all. With that. Mm -hmm. and they make it so, I mean, you can literally use your watch now and just tap it on things and pay for it. Like when you take money out of your billfold, when you take a dollar bill, you can feel it, you can smell it, you can taste it if you want to, I guess. Um, <laughs> but it hurt. When you give somebody a $50 bill, it hurts. Mm -hmm. When you're just touching your credit card to a machine, that there's no emotional attachment. Right. And honestly, what money is about. 10% math and about 90% emotion. I mean, there's so much emotion that comes with money and, and, and understanding yourself as a spender, I think is one of the most important things. Crucial, crucial conversations. So when, if you're decide, if you're just like, okay, I can see down the road, I'm making mistakes now. I can see that things aren't gonna be great down the road. I need to make a change now. I need to set a spending plan for yourself. I need to set an emergency account for myself. I need to start doing these things. That's a conversation you're having with yourself, right? And you gotta be on board. 
If you're not on board, it's not going to work, right? Like, like I said, it's like dieting. If you're, if you're not going to give your all, it's not going to happen. But people love the outcome, right? And so you have to, have, first of all, have a conversation with yourself. Can you do this? Are you willing to do this? Because it's going to take sacrifice. You also have to have a conversation with your spouse or significant other, whoever that might be. Um, because if there's two people in the house that are using their, their money, you know, together, if both people aren't on board, it's not going to work. I've yet to see it work when a husband, usually it's a wife that wants to do it and a husband that doesn't. I've never seen it work when both parties don't want to do it. I've seen it work when she takes his debit card and then they, they make it work that way. <laughs> um, but typically, if both people aren't on board, it doesn't work. Um, but also, you need to talk to your kids about it too, right? Like, and, uh, so my, both my boys are adopted. And so like when we, when we first adopted them, I was like, okay, I want to, you know, they've had a rough life up to this point. I want to spoil them. I want to give them everything I can. And so now I'm in the process of kind of like undoing that first initial stuff that I did. Like, okay, every time we go to the store, you're not getting a treat, right? You're not, you don't, every time we go to the store, we don't get a toy kind of thing. And so like, but there's conversations that you have to have with your kids because if you don't, like, they don't need to know like, hey, we're about ready to lose our house. But they need to know, like, hey, um, we need as a family, we're gonna try to we're gonna try to save more and spend less. And so these are some of the things that we're gonna do. We're not gonna get Papa Murphy's pizza every Tuesday when it's cheaper. Um, we're gonna save, we're gonna start saving some more money at home, kind of like that. Um, so, so those are the kind of conversations that you need to have with your with your children, but also with your family. You know, like one of one of the favorite, my favorite Christmases that we've ever done as a family is when we made stuff for each other. Like Aww. it was, it was so much fun, and people. I mean, some people made some pretty terrible stuff, but there was some really good stuff too. Right? And you just hoped that the person that made something for you made a good thing. Um, but you can save a lot of money when you do stuff like that. Like my family this year, we decided that we're gonna go. We're going to, in uh, just over the border in Idaho, Silver Mountain has like an indoor water park thing, and we decided this year as a family we're gonna go do a night there instead of getting gifts for everybody. As, as an extended family. And so that, I'm excited for that, but we're going to save a lot of money because we're not buying extended, you know, gifts for all our extended family. We're going to go and, and do the water park as a family and save money that way. And it's still going to be a great experience for our kids. Um, so conversations with your family and your coworkers, you know, like when they come like, oh, my son's in Boy Scouts and he wants you to buy popcorn. And you're like, you know, it's not going to work for me this time. But when you go to the when you go to the grocery store and they have the Girl Scout cookies out there and you're like, oh, and you feel bad, you know, so you try to go in another door, but then you have to go in the door. <laughs> and then you're like, okay, so you buy like eight boxes of Girl Scout cookies and now they're like, could go as a box. So it's like, you just spend a crazy amount of money. Just have conversations like, hey, it's not gonna work for me. Just one. Uh, bunch of busters. Late fees, this, hap this happens so much. And here's the unfortunate part. And, and, and when you miss a payment on your credit card, like I said, 35% of your score is based on making your payments on that. So if your goal in life is to have bad grades, that's the best way to do it. Just don't make your payments. And nine times out of 10, the people that I work with, it's not because they can't afford it, it's because they're first days. Okay, and the same thing with late fees. Like it's not because they, they, they can't afford it a lot of times, it's because they're first days. So automatic payment is your best friend. Okay, automatic payment on everything. I, every, the one thing that we and our family for the longest time did not have automatic payment was our sewer bill because they didn't do it at that time. So I made my wife do it because she was way more responsible than I was. So like, hey, you pay for this and then everything else is on that thing. Um, Overdrive fees. When I worked at Wells Fargo as a teller prior and a lead teller prior to coming to you, I had a guy that wrote a uh, check for a coffee. It was like three dollars, like three dollars and fifty cents for a coffee. It went through his account four times. Oh. The overdraft fees were thirty-four dollars every single time I went to his account. He had a hundred dollars in fees for a cup of coffee. I felt terrible for that. I was like, I asked my manager, I was like, can we reverse these fees for him? It's just like, you know, he's paying over a hundred dollars for this cup of coffee. And our manager was like, well, is it big care? And I was like, no. And I'm like, then you can't, then they're like, you can't, you can't, you can't reverse the fees. And I was like, oh man. So this guy paid over a hundred dollars for a cup of coffee. Hopefully it was the best so cup of coffee. He wrote a check? He wrote a check for coffee. That's why though? Yeah, it's, you know, it's a non-sufficient yeah. funds. It comes to uh, you know, $35 every single time it tries to go through. So uh, overdraft fees kill people. So you can you can a lot of times you can hook up your account with like a savings account. So like when you don't have money in your checking account, it'll transfer from your savings account or credit card or line of credit. Impulse spending, this kills people. 
right? And you see that like the good deal and you're like, oh, I don't really need that right now, but it's such a good deal. I probably at some point will need this, so I should buy it right now. <laughs> uh, that kills people. Every dollar has a name. Um, this is one of the big things that Dave Ramsey has been on. It's like everything you spend money on, you should have a plan for spending money on that, right? Don't just go out and buy willing money. Because that's when people get into a lot of trouble. Unexpected expenses, and that's why this emergency savings account is such a, such a huge thing. Like, really, honestly, if you hit a year's expenses in an emergency savings account, you don't experience financial stress, especially like other, other people. Because you can, it doesn't matter what it is, you can afford it. Right? There's so much freedom when you have financial freedom. There's, I mean, it's just like the, again, it, it's like the, it's really hard to like voice how much, how important it is, but it's like, when people reach that, and I work with people and they reach that point, it's just like, man, it's just like this monkey's been lifted off their back mm -hmm. and they're just able to live their life. Right. And when you're able to do, like, when your friends call them, like, hey, we're, you want to go and do a trip in three months, and you can say yes to that kind of stuff because you've planned ahead and, and, and sacrificed a little bit leading up to that. Man, there's so much, it's, it, there's such an amazing feeling to be able to do that. Also. Uh, debt, study plan. Like I said, I said, spending plan, same thing as budgeting, but people hate the word budgeting, so I say spending plan. I guess it's a little bit, it's a little safer. Yeah. Also, those getting started, procrastination. There's a lot of people that are in this category. And that, there's people that I work with, they don't even want to open up their credit card statement because they're afraid of what they're going to buy. And I mean, especially now with interest rates rising on credit cards and stuff, like, when you're paying 25% interest on a savings account, like there's not a savings account in this country that will pay you 25% interest. But when you pay 25% interest on your credit card, that's basically what you're doing is providing them with a 25% interest savings account, right? There's nobody that's gonna pay you that. Why would you pay somebody else that? I can't afford to do that. Most people can't either. So like, and, now, and I'm not gonna say credit cards are bad because there's a lot, like, there's a lot of people that can handle them and do really well. Um, but for most people, people struggle with this kind of stuff. So like, if you know, and you, if you know, in the deep down inside of you that you can't handle your credit card, then just don't have it. There's lots of other ways to earn credit and to build your, to build your finances. Um, because it's really easy to spend money on credit card. Mm -hmm. uh, feeling that there's never enough. This, I, mean, I, don't, I, I get to, to meet somebody that feels like they have enough money. That's just how it is. Hard to confront past decisions, like I said, the people that they don't even want to open their credit card statement because they're afraid of what they're going to uh, Goals overwhelming. And that's why I'm such, I'm, I want you guys to set goals for yourself, but I want them to be attainable. Like set realistic goals for yourself. Because when you, the first time you meet that goal that you set for yourself, it just gives you the, the energy, the excitement to get to the next level, right? And then it becomes a snowball effect. And now you're paying off stuff like crazy because. You're pumped up. You're ready to do it. Like, this is obtainable. I can do this. And you, every you, every time you get a little bit more free. Uh, fear of lifestyle changes. And, and, the, and the fact of the matter is, like for a lot of us, if we don't make changes now, if they're they're going to be made for us regardless if we want them or not. Um, so it's it's better to make them on your own terms than to have somebody force you to make changes. No idea where to begin. Um, and that's why you know, like a class like this. And honestly, and. I understand that like this topic is a pretty sensitive topic for a lot of people and they don't want to ask, ask questions. And my favorite classes are when people ask questions and stuff, which is great. I understand that this is pretty personal. So if you guys have questions and stuff, I think of my contact information is there. You can contact me and ask me questions and um, I'll play devil's advocate if you want me to. And I won't come to your house and tell you what stuff to sell. Um, but I'll, but I'll, if you send me your spending plan, I'll tell you, you know, stuff that I think you could change and stuff. Um, but honestly, like, Start by setting a, a set of spending plan for something. If you don't have a spending plan already, that's a great place to start, right? And emergency savings account is number two. Uh, put paper to pen. If you're not a paper and pen person, I, I, I love seeing stuff, so I write everything down. Um, but if you're not a paper and pen person, then if you want to do like an app or something like that, that's great, or an Excel uh, form, that's awesome. Uh, make it enough. Like, what, so how it is, is like wherever you make, wherever you bring home, you have to make that work for your lifestyle. Um, so either your, your options are make money some other way, ask for a raise, or reduce your expenses. Like those are your options, right? So if you don't have like, if you have like a skill that you can make money on, great. 
the, the cool thing now is with like Etsy and eBay, like people can sell stuff all the time. Like if you have a skill or something you can make, why don't you sell it on Etsy and make some extra money? My one of my best friends, he bought a mid-century modern dresser and he got it in his house and he was like, oh, I don't like this, but I really like I like the piece of furniture, but I don't like it in my house. And so he sold it. He sold it for $700 more than what he bought it for. He was like, I think I can make money doing this. So he was buying and selling mid-century mid modern furniture. And he was clearing like almost $200,000 a year extra. So like, he's just making money on the side. He taught himself. He became one of the experts in that. Um, he's since slowed down a little bit. But how many of us could have a, have a skill or could do something like that? I think that probably a lot of us could if we really put effort towards it and, and, and started making changes and losing that stuff. And honestly, I, I believe that when you know better, you do better, right? Because if you know that stuff's gonna, if, you're, if you know that down the road, three months, that stuff's, that you're gonna lose your house, you're gonna lose your car, you would probably start making changes right now. So if you know better now, then I believe that you can start doing better for the future. Like don't mortgage your future Start making changes now so you can have the financial freedom to do what you want to do later in life. Right? And for and for those those of us that are young, I'm not young anymore, but those of you that are young, like start save now. Now is the time to start. I don't care how much money you're bringing in, start saving now. Uh, keep on with Joneses. Honestly, I think that probably Facebook and Instagram has destroyed finances in our country. Because like, you can see where everybody else's life is. And, and just so you know. Most people's lives aren't what they represent on these social media sites. Um, realistically, people are, I, I go out, I have a boat. It's a 2003. It works really well. I could put 15 people in my boat. I love it. But it's old, right? And it probably should be reupholstered and stuff like that. I go out on the lake and I see all these $100,000 boats and I get boat envy. And I'm just like, oh, man, these are awesome. But then I start to think about, like, who can afford a $100,000 boat? Probably not most of these people. <laughs> right so they have a, i don't have a boat pin that was one of the things when i bought a boat i, I didn't want to have a boat pin. so i bought a boat that i could afford um, but a lot of those people that are driving boats around me that are hundred thousand dollars i guarantee they have a boat pin. so you, you gotta like you gotta give up the idea that like hey my neighbor bought it i should probably buy it too like realistically your neighbor already can't afford it <laughs> so don't get in a situation like they are uh and begin Begin now. Like now's the time to start. If you know, if you know before you got to circle the wagon, it's kind of like, like you should start making changes now. If you if you can see down the road that it's not going to end up well for you, this is when you need to start making changes. Wants versus needs. This is a great activity, especially when you're when you're developing a spending plan for yourself and your family. And I encourage you to do this with your entire family. It's pretty interesting when you do wants versus needs with kids, what their needs are versus. <laughs> what you think their needs should be yeah um, but real and but honestly like it's pretty eye-opening for like husband and uh husband and wife when they do it but they see like oh man this is way different um because it, it will be. and when you're setting up and when you're setting spending plan for yourself you cannot completely eliminate the, the wants i have yet to see a budget work that completely eliminated all the wants you gotta have fluff in your spending plan okay you, you got like this i know this guy and he was like, I just need to free up some money. And I'm looking at his budget, and I'm just like, oh, there's just like not a lot of room in here. And he had a truck, and we, we talked about him getting into a vehicle that he could, that was a little bit more affordable for him. Um, but one of the things that he was at, wondering about was his gym. Should I get rid of my gym membership? Because his gym membership, I think it's like 100 bucks a month, which, you know, I think at a good gym, is that's probably not crazy. Um, but this guy was in really good shape. And he's like, you know, like, this is how I release. I go to the gym, I work out. It's, you know, it's good for my mental health. I'm like, then I don't think you should get rid of that. Like, keep. Uh, we need to find out how to keep this in your spending plan because if you get rid of that, it, it's just gonna affect you in so many other ways. And the same thing is like, if you smoke and you decide, well, I spent a lot of money on cigarettes or, or chewing tobacco or whatever it is, and you're like, that's probably the first thing that should go. If you're trying to do, to start a spending plan and quit smoking at the same time, they do not work. <laughs> so start a spending plan and then slowly eliminate smoking later. Um, because if you do the two together, it does not work. Uh, be prepared to make changes and be flexible. Like I said, I have yet to see somebody that set a spending plan for themselves, and then the next month they didn't have to change it a little bit. You're not going to get it all right the first month, um, so you're going to have to make changes. And you're gonna, there's going to be things that you don't think of that's like, okay, that needs to be my spending plan. 
Um, but be strict about it. Like, like I said, every dollar has a mean. If you start living like that, and you every like, I can't spend money on that because I don't have a plan for spending money on that. When you start making those decisions, then you really get ahead ahead for yourself. Things that involve your family. Track where it goes. This is a huge thing. People don't track their finances. They go onto their app, they look at their balance, and that's where they spend money. Mm -hmm. If that is all you do, I guarantee you're losing money because there's a lot of human error that's involved in banking. When I was a teller, I put a $900 check in the wrong account once. It took us two weeks to find out that it went in the wrong account. And by the time we found out of what account it went into, the guy already spent all the money. So then I had to call him and be like, hey, the $900 was not your money. We need to figure out how he gets back. But it was terrible. Um, but that happens. And it happens a lot. Uh, I, would, I keep all my receipts. I keep them for a year. This is what I do. In, if it works for you, great. If, if not, you don't have to do it. Um, but I bought one of those, you know, those accordion holders. Mm -hmm. There's there's 12 dividers in it. I did one for every month of the year and I put my receipts in there. So now as we come up on December, I will take all the December 2021 receipts out and then I'll put the 22 receipts in. And so it helps me keep them for a year. If I buy like a refrigerator or a TV or something bigger, I'll keep it for longer than that. Why do you um, keep them? Because when I go through and I track my expenses, if something comes through that it was more than what I bought for, when I have my receipt, I can prove that they did not charge me correctly. Right. So this happened to me before COVID. So probably three years ago, I bought a bottle of windshield wiper fluid for like five bucks at the, at the grocery store, and they charged me over seventy dollars for it. Yeah. But I keep my receipts and I track my finances, so I was able to get the money back. Oh wow! But most people, I like the people that I work with, they don't track their finances, so they were just paid seventy dollars for a bottle of windshield wiper right. fluid. People get charged twice at restaurants all the time. And a lot of times that's how people find out they're vi victims of an A theft is they, they're tracking their finances and they're like, hey, where did this, this money came out? Where did this go? So you need to track your finances. Yeah. You know, and the, the, I'm not saying that you need to give a check register, which I think is a great idea. If you want to do that, do it. This is awesome. Like when the old ladies come in, they're like, you know, they're writing down their receipt. <laughs> like, I understand that that's kind of archaic, but they, they know what's going on in their account. Yeah. Um, so you don't necessarily have to go to that level, but you need, you can't just look at your balance and be like, okay, that's, I'm going shopping. You need to know what's going on in your account. And there's so much identity theft and fraud that's happening right now. Like my, my Gmail account has been plagued with uh, spam, phishing, they call it phishing. Mm -hmm. um, like, the, the, and they, it's to this person called Elizabeth, but they're like, it's so many different things like, click on this to save money and blah, blah. And I'm just like, oh, it's all, it's all scams. They're trying to, they're trying to steal information and eventually get into my money. Um, so there's a lot of that stuff that happens. So if you're not tracking your finances, especially now, you're going to lose money. Like if I talk about the envelope method where you put cash in envelopes, I think it's a great idea. And it, keep, and it makes it, you can draw a hard line, like when my money's out in this envelope, I'm going to spend money. Makes it really easy. Oh, yep, sorry. <laughs> I'll monitor ATM use. Like a lot of times people are good at monitoring their, their accounts, but then they go and draw money out of the ATM and they don't write that down and it kills them. Or the casino. <laughs> <laughs> uh, use um, expense tracking software. Like the, the every dollar, I think is great, but um, you know, there's software programs and stuff that are out there that can help you track your expenses. A lot of online banking stuff does that too. I'm a big fan of online banking. Like, if you can't set up stuff for automatic payment, then set up on bill pay that automatically sends it out. And what happens with bill pay is if it can't electronically send you send them the money, it'll cut a check and send it to them, which is pretty cool. Constructing your budget, hard copy. That's that's what I do. That's, that's the way I like to do it. Good. Um, computers, Excel spreadsheets. Um, keep going. <clears throat> Like I said, pay yourself first. You need, you need to save money. So you save money and then you do your expenses. House should be towards the top. Car, because you need to get to your job, that should be towards the top. Your credit card should be somewhere towards the bottom, if not the bottom. Okay, so like when I, when that, that lady that I worked with and she was about ready to be foreclosed on her house and her credit card was up to date, it's like, oh, well, this is so backwards. Your credit card doesn't provide you any benefit, right? Your house does. So you got to like that. You've got to pay for the most important stuff first. Uh, you are the most important creditor, right? You need, like, it's your money. Make your money work for it. Automatic savings account, like, people are 
People are terrible at saving money. We're a negative savings rate in our country. We're really good at spending money. We're terrible at savings, saving money. So do automatic savings. When you know your check's coming in the first of the month, automatic savings to your savings account. Out of sight, out of mind, it just takes it out. Really? So how do you do that? Just go to your financial institution and tell them. Oh, I want to set up a savings account paying? and I want to set up all my transfer from my checking to my savings on this date because you know your, your paycheck's coming in. Mm -hmm. You'll transfer the money over. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, so I used to have to pay my, my taxes uh, on my property myself. Like it wasn't part of my mortgage. Now it is. But I still have a mortgage tax account where it goes in, $500 goes in every month. And I was thinking about closing. I was like, yeah, this will be like, this can be some play money for me. And so now it goes in there and I love it because it's like, oh, yeah, I've got some extra money here. We can go on a trip or whatever. So, um, yeah, automatic savings, it's, it's, it's a great thing, especially for people that can't save money. And, and people all the time will say, well, how much money should I save? You save as much as you can without going having to go back into that account that month, right? So if that's 25 bucks, it's 25 bucks. If it's $200, that's great. But whatever you can save without dipping back in your savings account, that's what you should save. Or putting it on your Okay, budget. I wanted to put in a few percentages for you guys. You just scroll down to the bottom of this one. These, these are healthy percentages of what to spend your money on. So charitable giving, I think, is like should be towards the top of like, you know, like adding to your church or giving to a charity is important to you, then towards the top. Savings, 10%, you know, and or more. Food, utilities, housing, transportation, medical, insurance, keep going down. Entertainment. So I think these are pretty healthy percentages um, for, for what to spend in those categories. Any questions on that? Anybody seen anything that it looks? And, and, you could, and you could take, like if you could save a lot of money in your housing, right? Like six months. Hopefully you put it in savings. But, yeah. Uh, your, your, your withholding should be correct. Like when you get a $5,000 tax return, that means you were giving the government a $5,000 interest-free loan the entire year. Like that's money that you should be giving for yourself. So your tax, you know, like ultimately the goal should be getting really close to zero, right? Because why would you give the government an interest-free loan? Or loan? That's what you do when you, tax, when you get this huge tax return. So try to get it as close to zero as possible. I think one year I had to pay 20, 20 bucks or 25 bucks, and I was like, I was super stoked. But I was like, yeah. So I, you know, that, that was as close to zero as I've ever gotten. Uh, be conservative with non guaranteed income. Like if, if you or your spouse or significant other it is based on um, commission, like be as conservative as possible with that stuff because it's non guaranteed money. Overtime bonuses. I, so I was working with this guy that every year he would use his bonus to pay for Christmas. And so he, he was like, it, it, his bonus just came in like clockwork. And so he'd always do, he, it was his Christmas bonus. And so he'd always buy Christmas stuff around this time, you know, Black Friday and stuff like that to pay for Christmas. Well, one year his bonus didn't come and it was terrible. So just be careful with that. Uh, so fixed variable and periodic expenses. And honestly, the periodic expenses are what kills people because they're like, oh, I just didn't plan for that. So think about the stuff that comes through your, you have to pay for your car registration next to your So plan for it. And what you can do is you can list all your periodic expenses that you that you know that you're gonna have in the year, divide it by 12, and then create a savings account for that. And then you can pay, you can pay your periodic expenses at that. Uh, so if, if you don't have enough money, you know, you're, when you take your income and you minus your expenses and you're negative, you've got to make changes. Okay, so what you can do is you can increase income. This isn't always easy. Or you decrease spending. Reduce, substitute, postpone. And, and so for, like for me, it's like this process of like, okay, what off-brand stuff do I okay with buying? Because like, if you buy like the Winco brand stuff, I don't shop at Safeway anymore because it's so much more expensive. But when you can buy Winco stuff that tastes the same, why would I not save money buying Winco stuff? Right? There are certain things for me are not worth it. Off-brand cereal is not nearly as good as the name brand cereal, so I don't buy the off-brand cereal. <laughs> but you, you have to figure out what you're okay with substituting and not, and then buy that. 
or go for postpone. And so one, and one of the things that really works well for people is if you take and you look, okay, I want to buy this. I want to buy a $2,000 TV. And you look at how many hours do I have to work to pay for that TV? When you start putting like your, your time and effort and figure out what it's going to cost you to buy that TV, it becomes, it really puts things in perspective. And a lot of times people are like, I don't want to spend, you know, 50 hours or 20 hours or whatever it might be to buy this TV, you know, kind of like, yeah. So when you start to look at it and stuff like that, it really puts things in perspective. Talk to your financial institution. Like most people don't do this because I think that people don't understand that you, you can do this and you can partner with people. You can partner with stores. I went in, I bought a battery. My So it's, snow, it's been snowing a lot in Spokane. And I went to jump on my, uh, I have an ATV with a plow because we have a big long driveway. And uh, my ATV was, my battery was dead. And so I went in and bought a battery and the guy was awesome. He was like, um, He's like, yeah, I think it was like, it said like $100. He's like, how about you give me 75 bucks for it? Like, okay, that sounds great. And then I bought I bought a helmet for my son. And he was like, I was like, you can be doing this. And he was like, yeah. So I was like bartering with this guy. It's like a brand new stuff at a store. Like, you can do that kind of stuff. The worst they can say is no. Right. Right. You probably can't go into like Target and barter with Target people. But like, if you, like, I've bought stuff at Target that it's like the packaging is damaged. And you're like, hey, can I get a, can I get a little bit off of this because it's damaged? And you're like, yeah. So like ask the questions because you don't know unless you ask. The same with your financial institution. If you're having problems, if you're struggling, ask to see if they can modify your loan or change your payment. Because like I said, we don't, we're not in the car business. We're not in the home business. We don't want to take that stuff back. We want to keep people in that stuff as much as possible. So we are willing to work with people to keep them in those things, but you've got to have the conversation. Uh, talk to your credit card company. Like I said, if you can't make a full payment, you can make a partial payment. Talk to them, see if they can do that. For you. Keep talking to them. Consider eliminating some wants. Like I said, in your in your study plan, you have to have some wants. Okay. Get help. Do research. Like I was talking about, take look at it in terms of like how much time it's going to take you to do that. Uh, and be slow to make purchases. Like if you really want it, you're going to want to buy it in a month or two after you saw it, right? Uh, the, the tracking stuff, like the camel, 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 that I was talking about, it tracks everything on Amazon. Camel, camel, camel. So it's, there's like a there's like a BIN number or something like that. It's, it's something like that. And it's down towards the bottom. It's on every single product. You can you copy that and you put it into the camel, 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 and it'll track things. And you can say, I want you to send me an email when this product reaches this number. And you can see exactly what the average price is, what the lowest price that product's ever been. It so it tracks all the prices of products. It's really cool. Uh, credit reporting companies. So there's three, there's three major ones. If you do not get a copy of your credit report, I encourage you to. You're, we're all entitled to get a free copy of our credit report at least once a year. If you're a victim of fraud or identity theft, you get more free copies, but we're, we are all entitled to at least one free copy. So get it. Right, figure out what's going on in your credit report. Annualcreditreport.com is the only website that is sanctioned by the federal government that is truly free to get a copy of your credit report. Uh, Freecreditreport.com is a service you sign up for. It's an identity theft protection service you sign up for. It's like 50 bucks a month. Credit Karma is not a true credit report. We actually had a guy that was like, he was really close to getting a better interest rate on the loan. And he was like, oh, my credit score went up. And he was looking at Credit Karma and, and so, our, our uh, lender was like, yeah, I don't think we should pull your credit again because it, may, it might have gone down. And he's like, he was so adamant because he checked on credit karma and it had gone up. And they pulled, we pulled his credit and actually credit score had actually gone down. So it, it can give you an idea, but it's not a true credit report. So would you recommend using it or not? Just I, using I, wouldn't make this, I wouldn't make decisions based on it. So this is my contact information. You go back for two seconds. Yep. Do not you can you can you can mail in to get a copy of your credit report. Do not mail in to get a copy of your credit report. That's a terrible idea to send that information to them. Um, so go through their website. Yeah. And honestly, like your computer needs to be up to date. Like that's the way that people these criminals get in and get, get your information is they get into computers that you, that don't have the most up uh, up to date operating system. So like when it pops up that hey there's a new operating system, download it. Download it. Same with your phone. Your phone is a little computer. You've got to have your operating systems update. Do you guys remember when Equifax was um, had a data breach? 
wow. it was like five or six years ago. Yeah. There was like 183 million names, oh, social security numbers that were compromised during that. You know how that happened? There was an IT guy and an executive person that did not update their operating system on their computers, and that's how they got it. So you, and that's the reason why they update those operating systems is to fix holes when they find them. So make sure your stuff's up to date as much as possible. It's a lot of information. <laughs> Thank you. A lot of good information. Questions? We're almost at it. We are almost out of an hour. Any well questions? Done. I don't see anything in the chat. But... Would you say that uh, credit card is not a good app? It's a good app, but it's, they're, they're, they're selling the products. Oh, yeah. But, but even now, the like, the third party companies, they uh, I haven't looked at this, but it, it always catches me off guard. It's like, uh, Experience will say, hey, our uh, credit boost. It's like, okay, how are you boosting your credit? Excuse me. And, and so, that, so there's also companies that say, hey, if you sign up for us, we'll boost your credit. We'll give you, we'll give you a good credit score. So like when people have bad credit, they're like, well, that's pretty appealing. Well, what happens sometimes is what they do is they'll take a, a business, tax, a TIN, a tax identification number for a business, and they say, don't use your social security number, use this number. That's against the law. So what basically what they're doing is they're creating a new social security number for you, but it's not a social security number, it's a tax identification number. Um, and so they're in a sense creating a new credit card for you, but it's against it's against the law to do that. So if there's any company that's that like guarantees that they can like boost your credit, your credit is based on what is happening in your finances. So unless they can like eliminate stuff that's not true that's on your credit report, like there's no way they can really boost it, except for like experience transunion. I don't know, I don't know exactly how they do it, but they're the actual credit reporting companies. So I would assume that they can do it in some way. Um, but what happens is every single month, these credit reporting companies gather your information as a borrower, and then they send it to Fair Isaac, which is FICO, and they create the credit score. Okay, Your credit score is just based on what's on your credit report. So as long as the stuff on your credit report is correct, then your credit score is going to be correct. Does that make sense? So like if you pull your credit and you have stuff on your credit report that's not your stuff, that it like belongs to your spouse or something that you're not on, that stuff should not be in your credit report. Right? Only your stuff should be on your credit card. So it's really important to pull your credit because a lot of times that's how people find out they're victim of data. Is they pull their credit. We had a guy, a young man who came five for student loans, $3 million in debt, had no idea. His wow. uncle had taken his social security number and went crazy with it. And we pulled his credit for student loans and found out they had all this debt. So pull your credit. And it's easy to do. I just did it this weekend, actually. I just used the annual yeah. credit report yeah. and I did it this weekend. But even that, it's a little bit confusing. They make you go in and then it's like you have to click on the first one and then you have to wait and go back and then do the second one and yeah. the third one. And they do try to sell you stuff, yeah. like especially Experian. Yeah. And I think their credit boost thing is where they give you, they like put a positive thing on your credit report for like if you pay your utilities on time like pacific power or whatever if you pay those on time and you've got a good record with that they can put that on your credit report yeah and honestly i like, did not pay for that a, a, all a credit report is is it's, it's an adult report card when it comes to finances right it's all about risk management so when a lender looks at your credit report they're, they're assessing risk the three major reasons why your credit is pulled is creditworthiness, whether or not you get a loan or not, and what you pay that loan. Uh, employment, 70% of large employers now pull credit. And uh, insurance. A lot of states allow for insurance companies to pull credit, and they plug in their calculation, and they turn partially based on your credit score what you pay in car insurance or homeowner's insurance. Um, so it's all about risk. Because the idea is, if you are bad with your finances, then you're probably a, a worse driver. And, and you may be a great driver and horrible with your finances. But statistically, that's right, right? And the same thing with like, you, probably most of you have a job or been in a job interview. Like companies, like when you're when you're interviewing somebody for an hour or half an hour, it's hard it's hard to know if that person's gonna be a good fit for your company, right? How they are gonna be as an employee. And so what employers are doing now is they're pulling credit to determine whether you're not you're gonna be a good employee. Because if you can't handle your finances, then how are you gonna handle the responsibilities at work, right? That's kind of the mentality. So, and you have to consent to them to pull your credit, but probably if you don't consent, then they're just probably not giving you the job. The last three positions that I applied for, they pulled my credit. Actually, it's similar thing. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I was going to say too, uh, really track, you probably already said this, but track your, what's, 
going out, your money is going out because you have apps you have on your phone, but that's these people that are stealing from us steal tiny, tiny bit. We kind of like do little feelers to see if they can do it. Yeah. So they'll steal like a dollar, two dollars, three dollars, three little sums. Yeah. And then they'll go in there and do a bigger amount. We I went down to Arizona, this was I don't know, five or six years ago. And I went with my cousin. We went and got breakfast. We were going to a NASCAR race. We went and got breakfast burritos, and it was like 10 bucks. He bought my burrito. So he put he, he bought breakfast burritos. And then we were like, okay, well, we should probably go get cowboy boots to go to the to go to the <laughs> Obviously. We go, yeah. we go to the cowboy boots store and he buys a pair of cowboy boots. And then we went to the NASCAR race and then you get those headphones and you can listen to the driver's talk. And so he was like, I'll, I'll he, it was like a joint one where you can both listen. And so he's like, I'll pay for it. You just put it back. I was like, okay. And so he bought that. And then afterwards he was like, I need to go buy a camera for my wife for her anniversary. Well, he went and they canceled his credit card because what they, what they see is <laughs> these larger purchases that are happening. And the company was like, okay, this is what they do. They try to figure out what they can get on that card. And then, so they, the company, the credit card company just canceled it or put a hold on it because they thought it was fraud. Right. The same thing is like when you travel, if you, all the time your card's being used in Yakima and all of a sudden it's being used in England, that's a red flag. It's going to pop up with somebody's computer. Yeah. And if they can't get a hold of you or prove that that's you, do it, they might put a, they might put a hold on your card. And when you're traveling, that could be really interesting. So you want to let your credit card company know or your, financial institution know that you're traveling like hey i'm going to be in out of the country for two weeks in england or whatever so that's so, one way to kind of go around that yeah they'll put a note on a lot of times they'll put a note on there like so when it pops up they're like oh yeah they're in europe for two weeks and they are i think the good news is that these companies are being sorry are being really good about monitoring because um they're catching things yeah well it's and, like how did you catch that so, so when you lose thirty five hundred dollars in your card so I, I had a guy come in, he was really upset. So somebody had taken $3,500 off his card and his bank was not reimbursing for the funds. And I was like, oh man, that's terrible. When did this happen? He's like, oh, like a year ago. And in my head, I'm like, you waited a year to let your financial institution know that $3,500 from your account? Like, of course you're gonna make it. I think it's like 60 days. Mm -hmm. 60 days, you could be held responsible for the full amount. But what if you don't know that it's happening? What if you don't, you so know. what they're saying is if you haven't looked in 60 days, then your the negligence is on your part. Oh, but like when you, if somebody takes $3,500 out of your account and then you get that money put back in, who do you think pays for that? Your bank, right? Mm -hmm. That's a liability. We pay millions yeah, yeah. of dollars. Yeah, they're like that's a liability for your financial institution to give you that money back. Right. So if you're being negligent, they're gonna hold you responsible for it. Right. And a quick question. No. Just recently my mom was charged on a credit card for like an Amazon account for Amazon Prime to what it's a streaming site. So we have no idea where that came from. Like we don't have this uh, streaming site per se. Should we be like on the lookout? Because yeah, I mean I would I would I would try what you'd probably do is contact the company for Amazon and say, hey, this charge happened and it wasn't hers. Okay. And then if they're not gonna reimburse you, you would contact con contact your financial institution. It does get bombarded with like all kinds of like spam mail and stuff. I do just kind of attacks. They think I'm some kind of Joel and all this happens. It's insane. It's like uh, my like I said, my Gmail account has been bought up so much this last year. It was like to the point where I was like, do I have to get a new account? And so I put in, I was able to put in this thing that I, so there's always this person named Elizabeth as part of their emails. So I was able to put in in Gmail, put in any email that contained the name Elizabeth, mm -hmm. that it gets immediately destroyed, uh, thrown trash. So hopefully nobody legitimate named Elizabeth tries to email me. Right. Don't matter what group. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's like it's dude, the scams that are happening is insane. There's so much money. I mean, millions and millions and millions of dollars during COVID. Uh, uh, employment benefits and like federal sub subsidies that fraud it went up over seven thousand percent wow because people were getting the covid money there the scammers were taking the manager like crazy i didn't even get it there. they were making <laughs> oh it was insane yeah it was well, I don't know. Question from the yeah it was about so how i've been looking at investing like a roth ira mm -hmm. how old do you think someone should be before they start Investing money into like a, an interest savings. As soon as possible. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Is there an age minimum? Well, so um, I don't know the minimum. For, they're at as like at sixty five for the Roths. You have to start withdrawing from them. Mm -hmm. um, so there's there's stuff like that, and there's amounts. It's like I think it's like six thousand is the amount is the top that you can put in there every single year. 
but that money, you know, you, like with the Roth, or the Roth one is you pay taxes when you pull it out. No, the Roth one, you take it out. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you pay for money for now, which is probably good because you're probably you might be in a lower tax bracket right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. So pay traditional, now. traditional. Yeah, I think they, you won't get taxed. Yeah, what, traditional they tax you when you pull it out when, when you're older. So do you have to be 18 to start an IRA? I don't know. That's a good question. Probably. I'm not going to ask all of you. But yeah, invest as soon as possible. But you want to be, but you want to be smart about it. And then, like, if you have a job somewhere, if you're if your company offers like a 401k matching, you should at least invest in there what they're matching. Like if they match 7%, you should put in at least 7% because that's free money, right? You're talking about like free taxes? No, so like, so like, like a 401k is an investment for the, it's, a, it's an investment account that your employer sets up. And so a lot of employers will have a matching. So they say, we will match dollar to dollar up to 7% of your salary whatever it is. And so if they're offering something like that and you're not putting any money in, they're not matching anything because you're not putting anything in. So you will at least want to put in the amount that they're matching. But put in as much as you can, for sure. Yeah. Good question. Yeah, you're back from but you want to be, but you want to be like, when, you, when it comes to investing, you want to meet with a professional. Because there's a lot, like the whole like crypto thing that's exploded and now it's like tanking, it's crazy. And there's these, they're called, I think they're called NFTs. Yeah. They're the, 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 the art. Yeah. I'm still trying to wrap my head around like where people find value in that. But the only reason they're valuable is because people are finding value. It's literally like a gift image. And some of these are going for like, oh, sorry. some of these are going for like $40,000 an image. What? Yes. yes. It, is in, it is insane. In I, I, I hope that. Like some of them, some of them are like songs that artists do and stuff like that. Hopefully, like those are, I can see more value than that. Mm -hmm. But like just like an image. So like what they do is they create a computer program that will like an algorithm that'll make these images and just change them a little bit, and then they sell them for like tens of thousands of dollars. And people find value in them, so they buy. Them. And the, the idea is they buy them and they go up in value and they can sell them. I just I just understand. But they but young people now their their ability to invest in that kind of stuff is unlike anything that. I've ever seen. So you gotta be careful. You gotta you, you want to you want to have a plan. You want to have a plan for your spending, but you also want to have a plan for investing. And you want to sit down with somebody that that can help you with that. We're saying that it's like a job interview. Like when you're interviewing somebody to be your financial planner, you gotta feel comfortable with them, right? And they gotta be asking a lot of questions and not doing a lot of talking. They should be listening more than they should be talking to you. Does that make sense? Just be careful. Yeah. So for the taxes, when I started doing my taxes, I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. And then I met with someone and they told me to not put my son as a dependent. It's just when I get my taxes, I'll get more because it's like a savings account. So you don't recommend. Well, so, so yeah, it's like a savings account, but it's an interest free savings account. Because that's money that's owed to you. That's your money. Does that make sense? So if you, if you like for a lot of people, that's the only way they can save money. So they get their tax return and they get $5,000. But that's not like that $5,000 that they just decided, you know, in April to give you $5,000. Like that's $5,000 that you should have the entire year, the that previous year. But you just gave the government an interest-free $5,000 loan that should have been money that you should have had all year long. So instead of getting it every single month, getting a little bit more money, you get $5,000 in one lump sum. So that's why you want to try to get it close to zero, because if you get a huge if you get a huge payment, and unfortunately when people get a huge amount of money, they're usually not very good with it. They go out and buy stupid stuff, almost across the board, right? Like they go out and buy TVs and stuff like that because they're like they're not used to having money, and then it's like all of a sudden like five thousand dollars comes in their account. They're like, what can I buy? It's 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 so sad. I worked with a lady. She got a settlement for seven hundred thousand dollars. And I was trying so hard to get her to like, to like invest this, do something with this money. And I could, it was just like casino, 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 oh, casino. Yeah. And it was just like, it just made me sick to my stomach. And I'm like, man, this could really, can literally be life changing for her, but she's going to blow it. She blew it in a little over a year. I was like, it just made me sick to my stomach. 700,000. 700, 
So say for someone that I've never- She bought a house. She bought a $400,000 house. $450,000 house. But I, I would assume at this point she doesn't own the house anymore. Probably. She probably, because she couldn't afford it, I'm sure, if she's not making changes. What percentage of your clients or people that you're helping are just living out of their means? Like, how many people would you say that you see are just no, nobody? People, anybody that has their stuff together doesn't even meet with me, meet with me, oh. no, because they already know what they're doing, you know. So, it's the people that need help, which that, and honestly, that's the people I want to meet with, anyways. Like, I want to help them that are in need help because it's kind of a waste of my time if they already know what they're doing. Like, I don't want to just go to their house and tell them what to sell. I want to, like, help them get into a better spot. Because, like, I understand what the financial freedom, like, peace of mind that it gives them. So, like, I want to help people to get to that. Because, like, living paycheck to paycheck is no fun at all. Not being, you know, like, with money, with money in, like, a savings account, you have the freedom to be able to make decisions that you want to make. If you want to go on a trip, you can go on a trip. Because you have, you have money for it. Like, that, like. You can't like there's it's incredible it's a it's an incredible feeling and i want everybody for that so i've never done taxes before i i got a late start in life but how how do i go about doing that now that i've been working and so what should i do taxes are due by april 15th and so yeah you you, you can do turbo tax or you go in and Sometimes the libraries and stuff will do free tax, like people will help with taxes and stuff like that. So you, maybe the, the university might do something, but something There's like that. A college. Free tax USA tax mm -hmm. tax is a free one. That yeah, was free. The other basic one. one. Yeah. But there's also, I think, Tiffany, what you're asking is like, how do you calculate what you either you know your exemptions or whatever? There are you can Google that and yeah. say, here's what I my salary is. Here's what my exemptions are. How do you come out zero or close to zero? Is what you're saying, right? Yeah, I'm not a tax expert, so I can give advice and that kind of stuff. But if you, the, the closer the closer you are to zero, you're just on. It's money that you deserve the entire year. And money you could be saving, like Josh says. So right. there, rather than you right. giving the loan to government, you're getting that extra twenty dollars or whatever. Because like if you get if you were to get a five thousand dollar tax return and you put in the savings account, that's great. You're not benefiting from the interest you would have earned during that time that you should have that money anyways, but at least you're saving the money. Mm -hmm. um, but the problem is most people don't save that money when they get this huge influx of money. Any more questions? Otherwise, I have one more. My little slide up. There are any questions going on? Good question. Do you have like a business card or something available? Should we just um, I, I have business cards in my car. I'm not doing anything for this. Um, if you email me, I'll be back to you. Because I think I'm not currently working right now. And technically, I have no income, but I'm sure in the future, I will need some help because when I have worked in the past, I did this stupid thing and didn't necessarily make you know, bank accounts and stuff. And I would save money, but I would get what's the word I'm looking for? Fancy after a while and just end up blowing it anyway. No. So I mean it was only like a couple thousand dollars here and there, but I mean Yeah, but that like that's kind of stuff that like setting goals can really help you with because when you have a, when you have something that if you're spending for or saving for a purpose, it helps you save money. Right. Does that make sense? So if you want to get a new car or whatever it might be, like and sometimes it's like I got the stuff that I wanted, but I mean it's like the cliche stuff like like fast food or just like random stuff that you don't really need. Yeah. You know, Dude, you know it destroys people financially. Yeah. Not yeah. only health-wise, but it's so expensive. Your pockets. Yeah. And after a while, it's like, in my mind, it's, like, it's just five bucks. But then when you're at the store, it's like eight something. It's like, oh, you know. It all adds up. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's why if you track your finances for a month, it, I mean, it's, it's pretty incredible when you can see what you spend money on. Okay, one last question. I have uh, what ways will you use to break the debt cycle? Start saving. What are some ideas that you may have taken from Josh? If you still have your phone, you can try the Slido and put your answers on there. Um, and then I just want to remind anyone who didn't sign in, um, please put your name on there. And if uh, you need a great gel pen, I've got some financial literacy pens to share with everybody who's here today. Also, our little swag bag. Um, so. We need a little swag bag. We've got swag bag. Oh, I think Josh is sharing his candy bucket once we um, so get some answers here. Go ahead and hit submit. First one I'm seeing is 
Um, somebody's going to create their spending plan. So whenever you're taking away that, that plan that Josh discussed. Anybody else having any luck with my slide out? <laughs> I don't know why it's not working. Well, I mean, okay. And honest, like the two most important things, study plan and emergency savings. If, if you leave with the idea that if you don't have those in place, if you plan to do those, like you're already ahead of 80% of the population. Because uh, most people don't have a plan for their money. Okay, yep. Yeah. Set up yeah, your I spending know. plan, track your spending. Most people. I mean, and that's the thing is like, I think what happens is people look at social media and they're like, oh man, like, Everybody has it together. But the, the fact of the matter is people, most people don't. Like we're in native cities right in my country. So people don't understand finances very well. So if you start doing this stuff, you're already making your leaps and bounds ahead of most people. What did you call that? When you look up, you're saving your receipts and stuff, what would you call that? Tracking your spending? Tracking your spending. Keep receipts, for sure. No, I, I'm trying to get this viral thing. Well, even like, so I used to not keep Costco receipts because Costco is so good about taking everything back. But now even Costco is like, they'll give you, they'll give you the most recent price on a lot of things. It's like, if you keep receipt, then you're getting the amount back that you actually paid for. Oh, sense? awesome idea, everybody. Spend less money on Diet Coke. <laughs> <laughs> Buy from Walmart instead of McDonald's. Keep all my receipts from Fred Meyer and Gap and groceries. Awesome job. Um, build my credit and track my spending for future education, such as school utilities and avoiding random spending. I think they picked up a lot of great ideas yeah. here. And like that, you know the, so, coup, the coupon clippers? People, people save a lot of money doing this uh -huh. stuff. And it's yeah. kind of silly sometimes. And I'm just like, oh, I don't know if I'll do that person, but you can save a lot of money. Doing that. Okay. You mentioned this in one of the, the things, I guess it said. Have the Jones keep up with you? How, um, can you elaborate on that a little bit? Like, yeah, be, like so. Because I know the that, it's like you keeping up with the Jones, but how would you in turn have them keep up with you? Because honestly, like when they, because like the love when you have financial freedom in your life and you have that, like when you have a plan for your money, you have an emergency savings plan, you like the freedom that you have from financial stress, like most people have. Mm -hmm. Like people are gonna, people are gonna want that. Like everybody wants. That. Oh, yeah. Right. And so if you're accomplishing that in your life, they're gonna, like their life on Instagram is going to look like they have it, but in reality, they don't. They're going to want, but when they're friends with you and they see that, you know, you have this freedom to be able to make oh. the choices that you want to make because of the sacrifices that you've made. And I'm not talking about like, you know, not have a car or stuff like that. But honestly, like when you, when you start like foregoing some things that you would normally buy and saving that money, putting it aside, like you can really scare yourself ahead. Mm -hmm. Right. So, for instance, one of the one of the things that we did in our family is we got a cure. We stopped drinking coffee out because it's expensive. Mm -hmm. Right. So, if you if you plan ahead and, and, you, and you can make pretty decent coffee doing some of that kind of stuff, and it's like, well, people are like, well, I have to have an espresso. Well, maybe get maybe splurge a little bit, get an espresso maker, make it at home, so then you don't have to go to the store because it probably doesn't take too many trips to the store to pay for something like that. Yeah. Right. So, figure out like. What you're okay willing, like the like the whole diet coke thing. If you can go and you can buy, you know, diet cola, you know, at, um, at Winco, and you like that, then buy that. You know, if you you got to figure out what those off brands are that you're willing to spend money on that that, that still tastes good. And, I, don't know, I mean, I think they just know the diet coke's even worse than regular coke now. <laughs> yeah. It pulls your your system into thinking that you're having sugar in your mouth. So right. any of the things that are diet or diet potatoes or low calorie things, you should be careful. Well, thank you, Josh. Yeah, I appreciate your time. Did you see something you want to take for it? Right on. Yeah, cool. Thank you, Josh. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, fantastic presentation. Thank you, everybody in Grandview and online. Sure, See you like, next time. Shot of my back. <laughs> yeah, but they could hear you good. So. Yeah. Oh my gosh, seriously? Take the rising one.